Okay, so we'll start by creating a reference. And this time I'm going to use the basics tail rig. So this is the blue and white um, tail rig. Ignore any frame rate issues, that's fine. So let's take a look at our main control. So that's the, um, the arrow control on the ground. You can use that control to change your global scale. You can also use it to change the visibility of the eyes. So zero means off, one means on. Same with the tail. We will be using the tail um, later in this project, but for right now, I want you to start with it turned off. And then the eyes, we can turn them off. So um, generally, you're going to be using this middle um, controller as your main movement controller. Um, this rig does have a few extra controls. Your squash and stretch is the top sphere here, and it also has a squash and stretch at the bottom. In general, I try and just use one squash and stretch at a time. Um, it makes it a little cleaner when you're working on your controls. So I'm going to create a layer from selected and put this rig on there so we can go through the other two options. I'm just going to turn on the V or click off the V and create another reference. This will be the flying fox. Okay, and just ignore any issues. Um, you need to turn on textured view in order to see what it actually looks like. Now there's no master control. What you have to do is actually click and drag the whole, um, the body. And so the tail, again, you can show it or hide it. Ears, you can show or hide them. Currently the material on these ears is not showing up very well but um, that's okay. We could always apply a new material to them. Cool, and then once we have the ball, um, so it looks like you actually have to click on the ball itself in order to do squash and stretch. So that would be the downside, I guess, of this rig is that there's not an easy way to control it. You have to click on the ball and then um, type in the values for squash and stretch. So I'm just going to put this um, object onto a layer from selected and then hide it and move on to the next rig. So turn off the visibility by clicking on the V. Okay, so next gonna create a reference and this one is the ultimate tail. Now there is a problem with the tail's um, texture and I'll show you a slight fix it's okay when you turn on when you actually render it in Arnold but just previewing it it doesn't look good so keep that in mind if you want to use this rig and here I'm just playing with the different um, viewport options to see if that made a difference but it did not okay so if I click on the major ground control you can see that I can change the tail type so this is why this rig is so much fun is that you have these cute little fox and beaver faces as well as just a blank ball um, you can also change the tail to be visible or not um, you can change the global scale here and um, in general you're oh there we go turning off the tail so the main controller that you're going to be using to move your ball around is this one. And then this top controller is the squash and stretch. So it only has one control for squash and stretch, which is nice. If you do want to try to fix the tail, so I'm just um, showing you, turning back on the tail and just showing you how it renders. So you do actually get to see what it looks like um, in the normal Arnold renderer. Maya hardware is not that great. Maya software, um, it does work. It's not great and I wouldn't always rely on Maya software. I find that it crashes my computer a whole bunch. But the good news is if you want to use it in Arnold, you can. And um, just an FYI to render it in Arnold, I did have to add a light to the scene, so remember that. The downside is if you are play blasting, it will show exactly what's in the viewport, so the tail won't be the right color. Okay, one way to fix the tail is if you go to your hypershade editor and you select the material and change the ambient color, 
That does fix some of the disappearing tail issue in your renderer. It doesn't fix it perfectly, um, but if you do want to try it, um, that's the last thing I would suggest. So you have to select the orange and the white color. Okay, but um, for right now, I think I'm just going to use the, be the basic um, rig that I have. So I'm gonna delete that sky dome. I'm going to make sure that I put the ultimate tailed onto a layer that is invisible and then turn on the visibility for my basic rig. So now what I wanna do is set up a camera. I'm gonna use my side view as like kind of a base for my camera. Um, I can see that there's a little bit of squash already set. So um, I do wanna set the initial keyframe for my rig. However, I wanna make sure I'm not setting a keyframe for that main overall controller. So I'm just gonna select everything else and press S to set. I'm checking my animation settings to make sure my playback speed is 24 frames by one. And notice that I do have auto key turned on. So here, um, the little blue lines in my timeline are actually, I think, cached playback. So you don't need to worry about those. And since I did have a little bit of squash and stretch um, already set, I'm just reset that. And now for frame one, I am going to um, move all my, my objects over. I created a camera from view, so that's my shot cam, and I'm gonna turn on the resolution gate. So that allows me to see what's actually in view of my camera, and that's really important. So resolution gate is gonna help you a lot. And now I'm just gonna set some keyframes. So I'm gonna have this ball, I think, bounce twice or three times. So every eight frames, so one, eight, 16, 24, and then 32. So I'm just using that main controller and just kind of adjusting it. So you can scrub through, so just click and drag in the timeline and that will show you where um, the keys are. You can also press the comma key and the plus uh, period key to move only in your keyframes. So to move back and forth just in your keyframes. So now I'm just gonna set this last one and um, there we go, move it off and press S to set. Sometimes auto key doesn't work, so then you just gotta do it manually. I'm going to adjust my frame range to one to 40. So that's this little bar right down here. And I'm also gonna change my workspace to animation and that will bring up my graph editor down below here. Unfortunately, it changes the camera that you have in your main viewport. So you need to go back to panels and then orthographic and shot cam. And um, then we're going to go in our graph editor and break the tangents for our um, bounce tangents. And if you hold on to those tangents after you break them, you should be able to change them all at once. Now you really don't wanna have a center point or a high point that is lower than um, the rest of your graph line. So definitely kind of adjust that so you don't have any indents. And now just double check it to see how it is. All right, now I can see that that my frame 32 to 40 really needs a little more work. <laughs> Otherwise it just looks like it's floating off screen. Um, so what I can do is go to frame 16. Oh. Well, I can either move it and uh, I don't have auto key on, or I can go to frame 16 and copy that frame, or sorry, frame 24, copy that frame and then Command V, paste it in frame 40. So that's an easier way to do that. So let's work on our squash and stretch. So now um, when I go back to just play this one more time, remember that our squash and stretch controller is this little sphere at the top of our model. 
So I want to make sure that I, I believe I set a keyframe for that already at frame one, but now we have a few special keyframes that we need to set. So the frame before the ball hits the ground, your um, ball is going to be stretched. So that's a positive number anywhere from like 0.3 to 0.5. I'm going with 0.4. The frame where the ball actually hits the ground, so that is a squish, squash. So that's a negative number, so like negative 0 0.5, 0 0.4. Then the frame after this is when it's leaping off the ground and there you want a positive number again. So I'm going to go with like a 0.4 just to be consistent. So those are really important. The frame that it hits, the frame before that, and the frame after that. Now remember the way that Maya interpolates or adds keyframes in the middle. So basically by the top of my arc, I need to be back to normal again. So no squash, no stretch. And actually that happens a lot earlier than you think. So if frame nine is stretched by frame 11, it should be back to normal again, maybe even frame 10, depending on how much time. And then you can see again here at the beginning, it's starting the stretch too soon. So I want on keyframe six to um, make sure that there's no squash and stretch so that the stretch is more dramatic. And we're going to fix the lean of the ball soon. But first, let's do the rest. So tw frame 24 is when it hits. So frame 23, we want to have a stretch. So that's a point 0.4. Frame 24, it's hitting. So that's a negative point 0.5. And then frame 25, it's taking off again. So let's have another stretch, point 0.4. And then two frames later, no more squash and stretch. It should be back to normal. All right. And then the last one, it's going to be off camera. So we don't have to worry about that. That's great. Now, I think between frames 16 and 23, I do need to make that adjustment. So there it's fine. It's fine. And then you can see here, it's already starting to stretch too soon. So frame 22, I also need to add a frame that says no squash and stretch yet. And then the next frame, it's going to be stretched and then squashed then stretched. There we go. So just to double check it one more time, it's fine until it stretches right before the ground, stretches off of the ground. And up and remember that the stretch before it hits the ground is actually not a stretch it's more of an optical illusion where they uh, the ball is moving so fast it looks like it's being stretched when in reality it's just going very fast okay so now we want to add the tilt that comes along with the ball so um, once the ball gets to about frame seven we're going to grab this outside controller again and we're gonna rotate it this time. So E to rotate. And I'm just gonna make sure that I'm only grabbing the ring um, that's on the inside. And actually don't move it up and down, just rotate it right now. So I always wanna kind of work on one thing at a time. Let's go to frame eight and E to rotate again. And so now I'm gonna move it so it's just, a, it's close to being um, straight up and down, but not quite. And then frame nine, it's going to be shooting off in the opposite direction. Now, by the time it reaches the top of its arc, so that should be frame 16. Now that's at frame 16, it should be more or less straight up and down again. So we can even zero that out in the channel box layer editor. And then again, let's go to one frame before it hits and lean it back a bit. And I have auto key on, so that's really nice. Middle, this is kind of up to your artistic judgment, but I'm going to make it a little bit less than 100% middle. And then shoot it off to the right again. And then by the time it hits the top of the arc, it'll be straight up and down. And then by the time we get off frame, 
I want it leaning back again. There we go. Cool. All right, so you can see it's got a nice little arc to it, um, nice rotation to it. And um, it does kind of rotate gradually as it falls down and then shoots off in the other direction. And I kind of personally like the gradual rotate forward and back. Um, but depending on whether your ball is tumbling in space or what have you, you can change that. Okay, so one thing I did just do is I wanted to adjust the placement of the ball right before it hits the ground. So I feel like this frame seven, it should be a little lower. So if you select that um, keyframe at seven, or sorry, at eight, and then adjust this curve up and down, you can raise or lower the position of the ball. So um, if you select the other handle, you can do the same thing um, for when it gets to frame nine. And it's entirely your artistic judgment at this point of how you feel your ball, if it's hovering too much in the air or not enough, if it's springing up too much or not enough. So. Um, that is always an option to adjust your curves. I personally like adjusting my curves more than I like um, adding extra keyframes because then once you add an extra keyframe, it adds things like um, ease that you have to contend with. So um, if you do want to adjust them, I do find that kind of hovering over the actual the white line makes it easier to grab because I know some of us were having trouble grabbing the controls but um, yeah so just grabbing and hovering over the kind of dotted line part lets you grab it a little easier so there's one other thing I wanted to show you if you want to slow down your animation because this is pretty fast what you're going to want to do is um, grab all your controls I'm going to increase the what I can see on the animation timeline then press shift left click and drag all the way over your um, animation timeline here and I'm just going to extend it to frame 60 and press snap so now you can see it's a little slower that's much nicer all right and then if I wanted to maybe speed it up so I'm going to stop that I'm going to go to my first keyframe press shift left click and drag to select all those keyframes and then I can also scale it down so maybe I'll try 53 frames and then snap snapping is really important it snaps all your keyframes to whole numbers and it'll make it easier if you are animating in the future all right so last thing remember when you're play blasting you want to have that scale set to one make sure you have a good name where you can find it and then I forgot you want to hide your controls, so your NURBS curves. So show and turn off NURBS curves. Use your selection tool so that deselects everything. And now I can play Blast again. I forgot to turn off a few things. So actually, let's go to display, turn off the grid, display, heads up display, and turn on current frame. So that'll give me a running counter. And then finally, I want to make sure I'm turning off the resolution grid right now. It's or the resolution gate. So turn that off and then hit play blast and we're all done. Thank you so much.